Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the studios of Calaveras Community Television. Today we're going to be bringing you a program about the Utica Power Authority, uh, or the Utica Power Authority Board, if you will. And we have with us today uh, Duane Onito, who is the chairman of that board. Um, and uh, he's going to, again, bring you up to date on just exactly what the Utica Power Authority is and uh, where they stand uh, in their uh, relationship with uh, the uh, with, with the proposal to FERC uh, for the Utica Power Authority and also with NCPA and 4CPAC. Uh, Duane, welcome to the show. Thank you. Duane, uh, first of all, let's let's do a little review because a good many of our viewers may have missed the, some of the other shows that we've done and uh, the ones who didn't miss them probably have forgotten uh, exactly, first of all, who the UPA, Utica Power Authority, is, why they were formed, uh, and so forth. Can you, can you give us a little background on that? <laughs> How much do you want? Well, <laughs> well let's make it cursory. <laughs> All right. Uh, basically, the UPA is made up of three organizations, each having two voting members on a six-member board, two from Union Public Utility District in Murphy's, two from the Angels City Council, and two from Calaveras County Water District, CCWD. Okay. Okay, and this board, this this uh, alliance was formed. Why? This alliance was formed to save as much water uh, for Calaveras County as we could from the Utica project. Okay, then the next question is, what happened to PG&E in all of this? Well, PG&E indicated that they would not be able to run the system as they historically had because the requirements placed on them on this relicensing process that FERC, the Federal Energy Commission, mm -hmm. is, is, was placing on them was going to be so expensive that they would not be able to make enough power from the Utica Powerhouse and the Angels Powerhouse to cover the cost of this new, this new license. Okay. And so they agreed to sell it. Okay, now, uh, obviously, um, UPUD, the City of Angels, and the third party was CCWD. CCWD. Uh, obviously, each one of those people, those entities, have a, a, a very salient interest in uh, the water coming down, uh, uh, well, out of out out of the um, Griswold Creek area, uh, and ultimately down through the Murphy's Powerhouse and so on. Uh, you, uh, your group, let's say, uh, has decided then that they would put together a plan, which they have already done and would submit that plan to the Federal Energy Commission. Is that right? Right. Okay. It's, that's a pretty simple statement of a very complicated oh, procedure. Sure. But basically what happened was that CCWD and NCPA entered into an agreement where they would each purchase half the system and NCPA would take the top half with all the expenses for recreation, environmental protections around the reservoirs, uh, the high reservoirs, Spicers, uh, Utica Union, uh, Alpine, uh -huh. take all those expensive things that PG&E said was too expensive. They would take that and take about a third of the water and because of Collierville Powerhouse, which is on the Stanislaus, and they can make much more revenue from the water than running it through the two small powerhouses on this side, they would take that and then CCWD would take the other half, or the two-thirds of the water, and run it through this side, through the, the two small powerhouses to pay their half of the cost. If that were to happen, it then it becomes, happen. okay, in as much as it did happen, it became obvious then, to the three entities that joined to form UPA, that you were no, no longer going to have control over any of that water, is that correct? No, that's not true. We okay. would have control over two-thirds of that water. Oh, I see, Approximately okay. 50 cubic feet per second. I got you. Now, CCWD, once they entered into this agreement, turned over their half of the agreement to UPA to run and manage, and UPA picked up pg es license approval, amended it, changed, got pg e out and put UPA in, uh -huh. uh, edited it and made some other changes, rather minor, in the proposal and submitted it to FERC, which was completed last fall. All right, now, uh, your organization, uh, Utica Power Authority, has submitted this proposal to FERC and visit with us a little bit now 
Duane, about what this proposal entails, not the minute details, but the broad details. What, what, what's entailed there? I'm going to have to refer to my okay, handy duty uh, map here. All right. Somebody's a pretty good cartographer, it looks like. <laughs> well, we, we, we cheated on this one a little bit. Basically, what UPA has is we are taking, I've got to locate the, uh, the tunnel tap here, right here. here at the Mill Creek tap there. Right, right here. We are getting, depending on the month of the year, 50 to 47 cubic feet per second comes out of the tunnel tap and into Hunter's Reservoir. Okay. And that we will get unless there are drought conditions or which things which there are provisions for cutting down on the amount of water. The first requirement that UPA has in this agreement, this is written into the agreement now as opposed to agreements that UPA have. If it's written into the agreement, that means the federal government will insist that we do this as opposed to other agreements which we could change. Okay. But we will be receiving that amount of water right. depending on the month. The first requirement is that at Hunter's Dam, we are required to release one CSF down to go into Maloney's to take care of fish flow here. And CFS is cubic feet, cubic per, feet per second. Cubic okay. feet per second. Now, the water will come down the canal, run through the Murphy's Powerhouse, mm -hmm. down through Murphy's to where we come to the Angel's Diversion. All right, now the Murphy's Powerhouse is located at the base of Utica Grade. Right. And uh, many of our viewers see it every day when they go back and forth to work. That's correct. And, uh, and it's going to go then flow down through Murphy's Park. Uh, out through Couch Ranch and uh, down uh, into what we normally call Murphy's Creek, is that right? right. And uh, of course, just a mile or so south of, uh, or excuse me, west of Murphy's, uh, comes the diversion uh, ditch. Yeah, your uh, viewers can pick up that whenever they drive their Murphy's Grade Road. Mm -hmm. The diversion is right above the flume, right. it runs along, along the road there. And at this point, we will take all but five cubic feet through the system mm -hmm. and down through the penstock, which everybody sees right there by the PG&E headquarters, right. go and run it through the Angels powerhouse down by the swimming pool and put it back in Angels Creek. And is at that point that UPA's control of the water ends. Okay. UPA is required by its license proposal, which the federal government will administer and make sure happens is that the, the other there will be five CSF running through this portion of Angels Creek here okay and uh, and five uh, compares to what the, has been going through there in the summertime is is that uh, is that a fair statement it was certainly a lot more than went through this summer which was two mm -hmm. or close to two mm -hmm. uh, it is not more than historically has gone okay. through there because his historical flow has been much greater because PG&E had all the water I got you. to play with, sure. not the part that we had sure. to give to... They weren't diverting any into the Colleyville powerhouse. That's, that's correct. Okay. And of course, once we lose that water, now we can no longer run these powerhouses okay. at capacity, which okay. PG&E could do. Now, uh, your proposal then also includes the maintenance of Ross Reservoir, uh, which you see out on French Gulch Road, uh, which holds some of the water. Uh, Basically that, a reservoir for angels right, and for comes, the, power, the angels' power. Right, okay. And of course, the, the bottom line on all of this is that UPA, uh, through generating power, is going to earn money uh, to pay for what? <laughs> the big question. Okay. To pay for... $3.7 million in loans that have been, do I want to say collected, have, that have been generated to pay for this project. Okay. Now, of that $3.7 million, $1 million comes from CCWD, which they gave, they didn't give, but they loaned to the district interest-free for five years. Okay. And another $1 million come from CCWD, which they gave, they loaned to the UPA interest-free for 10 years. Okay. And the first million came out of what CCWD calls their interest fund, their $4 million interest fund. The second part came out of the money allocated to District 4, which Dennis Dooley uh, helped give or loan to uh, UPA so that that's two million of it. The other 1.7 million 
comes a loan from LaSalle Bank. Oh, I see. Okay. As LaSalle Bank in Chicago. Uh, I understand uh, that in addition to CCWD, in addition to uh, the City of Angels, and in addition to UPUD, there are other entities who support this proposal. I mean, uh, you, didn't, uh, you, you didn't send this to FERC without having go gone to some other entities and saying, here's what we want to do. How do you feel about it? Right. All right. PG&E and NCPA both submitted their first proposals for this license. There were 12 entities that intervened or said, hey, you have to tell us what's going on here, and we, we want to know, and we want to be able to protest. All right. Uh, of those 12, 11 have supported this particular proposal. That includes the Calaveras County Board of Supervisors, wow. CCWD, All right. City of Angels, UPUD, the Murphy's Community Club, the State Department of Fish and Game, the State Department of Water Control, uh, and several federal agencies like Park and Recreation and this type of thing who impose the original restrictions on or the construction that PG&E said was too expensive that caused the sale originally. All those people are on board. Now this 12th entity <laughs> yes. that does not agree with this plan uh, is an organization called 4CPAC. Correct. And uh, if you've lived in Calaveras County in the last couple of years and have not lived under a rock, uh, you've probably heard about their efforts and uh, and and, and the fact that they're not happy with this whole thing. Explain to our viewers now uh, where 4CPAC comes into this scheme and what their concerns are. Well, what 4CPAC will do, since they disagree with what we have proposed, okay. is they will argue before FERC, the Federal Energy Regulation Commission, that our proposal is not a proper one and that either they should junk the proposal or they should amend it or in some way change it to bring about the things that 4CPAC thinks need to happen. And what do they think needs to happen? All right, let's go back to our map. Okay. The first problem occurs here at the Angels Diversion. Uh, 4CPAC thinks that 5CSF through the creek through this area here is not enough. Uh, their latest proposal... Not enough, excuse me, because of water. recreational purposes, uh, <coughs> agricultural purposes, uh, fish... Yeah. Okay, they have come with uh, dewatering of the creek, flora, oh. uh, and er that's basically been the argument, although there have been some comments about uh, environmentally with uh, fish production and that type of thing, okay. but since their main objection, or their objection has come on the basis of dewatering the creek, okay. uh, animals and uh, flora and fauna and that type of thing. Now, um, I know this is going to be a difficult question, but for those of us who are novices on this subject, uh, three cubic feet per second doesn't seem like a, a great deal of additional water. Um, it, it almost seems like much ado about nothing. How, how do we relate to an additional three feet per second? Depending on the price of power, which tends to vary, it will be costing UPA ten to fifteen thousand dollars a year to run that extra okay. three down there. Okay. Uh, and of course there's no way really to visualize the ebb and flow of the creek and, and not certainly not in an open creek like yeah, that I mean right. uh, well if you were in a ditch you could measure or it. if some uh, somewhere like Mur even in Murphy's Park where we have spent a lot of time looking mm -hmm. at the creek uh, it's really hard to tell the difference in in three CSF well you mentioned Murphy's Park uh, can we go up there next and sure. talk about the what second, their desires are up there the second area of contention is Murphy's Park uh, UPA although it's not part of the proposal, it is not part of the proposal to FERC, has agreed by resolution that we will keep 22 cubic feet per second in the park. Okay. For CPAC has called for 35 to 38, which is a much higher, uh, a much higher figure. And um, in the summertime, in the past, before uh, the uh, 
the Collierville project and so on, what could we have anticipated as an average summer flow through that park? Depending very much on the type of water year it was, it could have been anywhere from 50 to 65. In the summer? In the summer. Oh, really? Well, again, we're talking about, basically, we're talking about the lost 25 cubic feet per second that's going for, to Collierville, oh, which you. always came down this way, sure. okay. which came down this way before. So any of the figures that we are talking about now, you can simply add about 25 right. cubic feet to that, and that would give you what the historical flows were. All right. Now, uh, UPA uh, has indicated to 4 CPAC that that they're not willing to capitulate. Uh, on, well, there's, on a, there's the a couple park. more. There's a couple more area problem areas. I think that we need to discuss. Well, I, but I was talking about just the flow through the park. Can I assume correctly that you folks are not uh, interested in accepting that uh, that figure from 4 CPAC? I don't think we can and have any. Uh, what's the term I want here? Any flexibility in deciding what happens to the water in the future. Okay. For example, if Murphy's continues to grow, we're going to need more water. UPUD will have to take that out above Murphy's Park, and consequently, it can't run through the park. All right. Uh, John Couch has contacted uh, UPA with the idea of by purchasing more water. Okay. Again, that will need to come out, or it, I should say it will be most economical to take that water above Murphy's Park. And, the, and remember, this license is going to last for 30 years mm -hmm. and possibly 50. Uh, I mean, it, it's uncertain as to how long FERC will grant the license, but there may also be need, we also may need other businesses come in or other things that may happen where we would need to take, for the economy of Calaveras County, that we may need to take that water out above Murphy's Park. Okay. If that were to happen, I would expect to meet, that we would be in conducting, talking to Murphy's Community Club and trying to get some feel as to should the water go through the park or do we want to produce another 20, 25 jobs for the county or something like that. But I would see that as an ongoing argument which is not wise, which is why it's not in the license, because if it's in the license, we are locked in and we would not have that flexibility. Okay, so to reiterate now, what, what amount of water are you recommending in your proposal to FERC that is, is going to be allowed through Murphy's Park? It is not mentioned in the Okay, uh, not the at all. It is not mentioned at all. It's a side resolution because of the reason that you just mentioned. Right. Okay. All right, let's go on. And? Okay. <laughs> For CPAC has also called for if we were to abandon the Murphy's, uh, the Angels Powerhouse for any reason, that we would still run water through the Angels uh, Penstock. Penstock. This I do not see as a problem, and I think we could. I don't. Again, this is my personal opinion, and not the opinion of the five other members of the board. Mm -hmm. But I don't see that this would. If we decide to abandon the Angels. Uh, Powerhouse, which means we're not making power there. I don't see that it would be a big problem for UPA to main, you know, just to block off the penstock or whatever. We could keep water there. What That's kind of a, what kind of a scenario could you envision that would cause you to discontinue uh, generating power in the Angels Powerhouse? Uh, how about uh, nothing but grapes from Murphy to Altaville, oh, and, okay. and the water being used for for irrigation? Okay. Uh, and basically, when I started this whole process was when CCWD was talking about that Angels Murphy's Corridor, Irrigation Corridor, trying to compare it to the Shenandoah Valley in Amador County and mm -hmm. that type of thing. And I would certainly a lot rather see trees and things and houses, and that was one of the reasons why I got involved in this project in the, in the first place. I see. I would see, and I don't see that urban development would take this much water. It would need to be some kind of agricultural sure. situation that, that would develop. Now, Duane, I read somewhere, and I'm not sure just exactly when or where now, but it seemed to me that flood control came into this whole scheme also. It is the fourth proposal, okay. and what 4CPAC is asking is that we somehow control or cut back in the water that we run through the Uni Canal and through the Murphy's Powerhouse whenever the flows of Angels Creek get too high. 
that that comes down out of Forest Meadows in that area mm -hmm. along Highway 4 above Murphy's, when that water starts to come up during flood conditions or during heavy rains, they would ask us to cut back on a very rigorous scale uh, the water flowing through the Murphy's Powerhouse. And UPA's position on that is? Is last January we went through the 100-year flood. And we got through that without any problem. I'm not saying that there were not scary times here and there when Hunter's Reservoir started to fill up with logs and mm -hmm. uh, the water was very high along this area here, along certain bridges that people used to cross the creek. But UPA showed that it could run this system safely in a 100-year flood, so we don't feel that there's any reason for us to do anything more. How many feet per second did you have coming into that uh, uh, Murphy's powerhouse uh, during the peak of the, of the water runoff last January? 100 cubic feet per second, which is just what the Murphy's Whoa. powerhouse will run. Capacity. Capacity. As opposed to an average of 50 to 55? Right now, we are averaging just about what run well. This summer, we average somewhere between 35 and 40 through, okay. through the powerhouse. Now, when you have extra water like that going through that powerhouse, are you generating that much more power? Yes. Okay. And you're able to sell all that? Yes. To PG&E PG &E or PG &E whomever? PG&E has to take Yes, it. I know. They, they, they're obliged to, uh, to take that. Um, and there is, there is no uh, uh, notion on your part that should we have a real wet year like that, you'll sell more uh, or, or divert more water to, uh, uh, to the Collierville Powerhouse. Well, because, because you don't have that capacity, is that right? Right, right. I okay. mean, basically we can't get it there because this water that was running through the Murphy's Powerhouse. Has bypassed the pipeline. It, it had not come out of the tunnel tap. The okay. tunnel tap was shut off. All right. It came down Mill Creek all right. and down the canal. We had okay. the entire canal open at all the floodgates and everything, and still the flows were so great that we were still running 100. Well, I asked that question because uh, our viewers who are looking at that map uh, may have been asking this themselves the same question. Sure. Why the heck don't you just give the rest of it to uh, NCPA? <laughs> right. Well, because <laughs> you can't be do it. You can't do it because it's coming into the system All after right. the tunnel tap. All right. Um, where do we go from here? Obviously, FERC uh, is is has made up their mind. They're going to stand pretty firm. They're going to do what they can do to for CPAC. Uh, I mean, for CPAC. I'm sorry. Uh, they're going to do what they can do to to dissuade FERC. Uh, from accepting your proposal in whole cloth? Well, I, don't, I don't imagine it would be that they want to, uh, again, I feel uncomfortable trying to speak for 4 CPAC. Okay. That may be one of the alternatives. I would suggest that what they would do is that they would propose that FERC amend our proposal okay. to include the things that they want. Okay. Uh, the final projected plan? Uh, you're, you're hoping, of course, that uh, FERC accepts your program as you have presented it. Correct. For CPAC, on the other hand, is hoping that they can get FERC to amend your plan so that they can have uh, some 13 to 15 uh, greater cubic feet per second through Murphy's Park okay. and some 3 cubic feet per second uh, running down the creek below the diversion uh, canal, uh, and, uh, and that's where we stand at this and point. And the flood control plan. Oh, and the flood control and, plan. And the fact that a uh, statement or uh, agreement that the uh, Angels uh, penstock stay in place if the Angels powerhouse were closed. Now, the flood control plan has nothing to do with aesthetics as far as they're concerned. It, they're, they're concerned about not being flooded out along the creek, not having their bridges washed out uh, along the creek, and so on. Is that right? That's correct. I see. Okay. And uh, U UPA's argument is, look, we've just been through the 100-year flood as far as we're concerned, and, we and everything came we, through fine, so, what's so why the, worry about what's it? What's the problem? Uh, you know, it's always difficult when somebody says, don't let it get too low in the summertime, but don't let it get too high in the wintertime, winter and you wind up on a system that we have 
actually very little, I mean, there are very few dams or anything that we have on this system. It reminds me of the Consumies last year when it flooded out uh, over there. What do you do? The water comes down and it's got to go someplace. So mm -hmm. also the UPA position would be we have very little that we can do to control the system, particularly when we have opened all our floodgates and we have water pouring out of the canal everywhere and we're still running 100 uh, cubic feet through the powerhouse. All right, UPA, let's shift gears a little bit here now, Dwayne. UPA has been holding meetings, uh, listening uh, to, to uh, for CPAC's concerns, um, visiting with them about those concerns, either agreeing or disagreeing, uh, or having no position, as the case may be. Where do we stand now? Are, are we still holding meetings, or are we at the point now where you, uh, where uh, Utica Power Authority is saying, we're, we're not going to meet it with anybody anymore. We're just going to wait and see what FERC does. Uh, 4CPAC presented a compromise proposal, which basically still includes the figures that I have given you here today. And at Monday, last Monday, uh, the UPA board said that we were, the, the compromise was dropped. There was no motion for any more discussion, and basically, as what it happens now is we argue it out before FERC and FERC will have to make the final decision. And last Monday, for those of you viewers who might be watching this show a few weeks down the road, was the 26th of January, is that right? Uh, yes. Okay, the day after the Super Bowl. Right. Okay, so where we stand is you're waiting for an answer from FERC and I guess 4CPAC is waiting for an answer from FERC at this point. Well, I would imagine that 4CPAC is working very hard to influence uh, FERC, Adam Wicker, who is uh, the, I would, I don't know whether he's the spokesman for 4 CPAC, but he's on their board of directors, stated at the meeting Monday night after UPA uh, refused to take any action on his proposal that they would be aggressively, uh, pursuing this aggressively to lobby FERC for, uh, for their consideration, for, for what, they, what they believe in. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've been talking with Duane Onito, who is the chairperson of the Utica Power Authority Board. Uh, this, of course, uh, concerning the water coming down what we commonly think of as Murphy's Creek in Murphy's area, Angel's Creek in Angel's Camp area, and uh, obviously a, a very important tributary to those two communities. Uh, Stay tuned. There is more to come on this subject, I can assure you, and uh, Calaveras Community Television will attempt to uh, stay on top of this and keep you posted. Duane, thanks very much for being here with us today. Uh, we appreciate your input. Uh, for our cameraman, Ross Alford, for our producer and director, Paul Muller, this is Merle Luck, and we'll see you on Calaveras Community Television.